Hey guys, Brentold Build Show. Sleuthing today, gonna check out this house. When was it built? And one little caveat that really determines some of the other features inside there. Come join me today in the Build Show. So when was this house built, right? When, when, is it, when was it crafted? When was it made? There are some clues here that let us know kind of what the period is. One of them is they've got steel windows, okay? So steel windows are something that, you know, maybe in the 20s you start to see steel windows. Certainly in the 30s they're important and up into the 1950s. Our 1962 house, my personal house, has a steel round window in it and one in the back, right? So that period of time it was those historic steel windows now steel windows are really popular again today so they've got a really hip window right this block okay this limestone block to chopped limestone was also very popular so this is a typical 1940s house this house was built in 45 okay now when did the war end Bueller, Bueller, 1946, okay? So the war is going on from 41, when we were Pearl Harbor's bombed in December, to 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, is all during the war. Now, there are some things happening inside this house which make more sense to me now, understanding that it was built in 45, and I'll show you those in a sec. For my friends who bought this house, here are my recommendations. They've got some really great details here, okay? The form of this house, the scale of it, the, the steel windows, that limestone, rich materials. Now, look what happened on the front, okay? Someone added this thing onto the front of it. It isn't as rich a material composition as the house, right? They've got this kind of timbered entry. It doesn't contribute to the house. My recommendation for them is that they take it off, right? Because it doesn't contribute to the architectural styling of this house. Well, then you might say, well, what style is this house? Uh, good question. Kind of a 40s ranch, right? That's a one story, low pitch, but there are good architectural details here. That's a wonderful fireplace. They've got a curved little surround there. There are good, kind of a cottagey little, little details for this house that I really like. I would tell them to fix up this entry, right? I would probably tear this whole thing off. Why cover up with wood when you've got beautiful stone there? And so we would fix this entry, we would fix these details and have a pretty nice little entry now. But uh, that's kind of the first thing. Great house from the outside, fixed a few things. Now let me show you inside. Hello, can I help you? Um, unfortunately, this uh, door is not original in case you didn't notice. It is that classic uh, uh, Handy Dan 1980s bad stained glass with this oak door. This is actually a Victorian door, okay? You see this in the Victorian catalogs, but they're gonna have to replace this. This is bad, okay? And if you come inside here, there, there are some really interesting things going on. This assemblage here, okay? There is, you know, for one, you can see that there's sheetrock underneath here. Now, sheetrock appears to be the original material on this house, so therefore we know that everything added after that time is later. So if they wanna take this back to be an original house, I'd go back to the sheetrock. Now, wh why they put this panel in here? What are these doors, okay? The, this same kind of veneer is on top of these doors. They've got this kind of weird opening here. This is the same stone that's on the front of the house, so maybe you strip that back and make it natural again, tying the inside and the outside. So. You know, this fireplace is one of those uh, conducting heat fireplaces that, that turns on and the, the heat comes out through different sides. Don't know if that's 1945 or not, it's kind of weird. And so there are things about this house that make me go, hmm. Now, same thing here. If this paneling was added later, that means this built-in was added later too because they got the same paneling on the back here. I suspect there might've been doors inside here and I can feel some hinge marks, so there's probably doors over top of this. So maybe it looked cuter than it does right now. One thing that's just driving me nuts is these floors, okay? This is a pergo floor. It's, it's basically a picture of wood, picture of an oak floor on a MDF base, okay? So I'm actually gonna <laughs> peel this back. This quarry tile hearth, right, that looks original to me. So I'm sitting there going, okay, that's, that's probably original. 
you know, this shoe mold was added later, and you guys know how I feel about shoe mold, that it's not original and we shouldn't be putting it in here. So now I'm just gonna kind of peel up, and you can see that there's the picture of the wood, there's the MDF back. You know I hate that stuff. Okay, so what's weird, what's interesting, is they've got pine floors. Now, they're pine floors that have never been finished before. It means there may have been carpet, right? It means there may have been something down here that would have caused them to never have to stain and finish. Now, these are old growth pine floors, 1945, kind of right on that edge. I would stain and finish these. All right, so we're in a bedroom now, and we're gonna see a lot of interesting and different things going on. You saw my last video when I was talking about moldings from 1900 to 1940. This is a three-step casing, three-step base. It's kind of the same molding, but look what happens here. This thing, that three-step, really steps down in size. So we go from, you know, three and a half, almost four inches down to about two and a half inches. It's not as thick as well. So this most likely was done in like the 60s or 70s. Now, this, these closets <laughs> weren't here, here. So that's why we're seeing a louver door. We're seeing this change in casing and, you know, this kind of built-in happening because this wasn't originally here. But here's our steel windows, right? We've got these great steel windows that'll need to be restored, but good details here. We've got a sill. Look at the crown. Okay, this is very typical from 1900 to 1940 that you'd have a picture rail. Picture rail would be something that would you would hang your pictures from. It became the crown. Notice that it is about a half an inch or more from the ceiling. That's on purpose because you have these hooks that you would pick your picture up there and it would hook over top of that and there's kind of this round thing that you put your hook over and it holds your picture up. So. Very typical moldings, very typical details. Look at this door handle. This is original. Uh, this kind of 1940s, early colonial looking uh, detail. This is a probably an M-Tech put in much later. And so all these kind of you know changing details here show us kind of when things were added. And, and basically this house had some fix-ups, some additions, some improvements over time, but it's a little bit difficult. Now, why is it difficult? Because 1945 is a really weird time to be building. 1945 is right during the middle of the war. So there was rationing going on. There was a moratorium on building, like 42 or 43. And so some of the reasons we don't have, or that there's weird materials in here, or that they're not typical, is because we're in those building years, and those building years, not a lot of people were building during that time. I've got magazines that show how to build during this time, how to build before the war ends, how to you know find materials. So materials were scarce, materials are hard to figure out, and it kind of shows in this house, right? It's really interesting. I wanna show you one thing cool in this other room. We've got pine floors throughout most of this house. In here, it's changed, kind of weird. In here, we've got, we pull the floors up. Now realize that 1940, okay, Almost every house was a wood floored house, okay? Carpet was expensive, okay? And so wood floors were what people put in and they were the most economical material, right? That's not true today, but certainly in the 1900s to the 1940s, wood floors are typical. So if you come in a pre-1940 house and there's carpets down, you almost can guarantee there's wood floors. In this case, the wood floors are pretty awesome. <laughs> We've got strip parquet oak floors okay so this is a either something that they added later i don't think it is but i think is part of the original thing the thing that's interesting is you've got pine floors over there and throughout the house they have these pergo floors added so weird things are going on in here that make it hard to sleuth and go this is when this was built this is when this happened tons of original great details here but some fun things for this couple to kind of figure out and to try to figure out, hey, where do we want to spend our money? What do we want to do? What do we, what's original? What do we want to go back to and have fun in that process? So we're in the dining room. The kitchen has been redone. Not terribly though, not something that looks super dated, but there are some still cool remnants of the past. This kind of door, okay? Remember, up until probably 1960s or 70s, the kitchen was a servant's area, right? It wasn't the, the, the space in the house it is today, this type of door that would have opened onto a dining room was very typical. Going back to the 1900s, it's a swivel door. There's a spring there. It actually opens and closes each way. Still very original. Definitely would keep that. 
I think their windows are awesome, okay? Now, they don't work great today, okay? But to replace these with a steel window, that's a $8,000 window, right? And so why would I throw this window out? It's, it's valuable, it has a ton of character. There are elements on here. There was original interior screens. These would have been steel screens that would have gone inside here. These arms were what opened the window and closed. You can see that this one, still works the window right these just need to be cleaned oiled kind of fixed up again they're in really good shape then we go back to the floor and so basically what happens is i peeled up the floor here pergo floors got added at some point right and pergo I, i'm assuming it's pergo it's basically a, a masonite type flooring in the kitchen there's the standard and finish you know pine floors same flooring i would rather have that than this okay my preference i think that's much better looking i think that's a better architectural detail so overall this house is really wonderful right there's a ton of original details there's a ton of things that are going on i believe is really well built i mean the stone on the outside the steel windows there are some rich materials in here so my recommendation to my friends is you know good job you've got a great house needs some work but this will be a fun project 1945 kind of an interesting time period maybe some rationing that was going on there with the floors but otherwise Great house, really excited for him. Hope you enjoyed the sleuthing with me. Be sure to follow on Instagram and Facebook, Home Millwork, Home Homes. Sign up for the newsletter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I'm Brent Hall, thanks for watching.